All right, we're going to work on multiplication, division, and estimation with rational numbers. And so we've already been working on adding and subtracting, and now we're going to try and understand these other two operations. But first, a warm up. So we're going to try and add three fractions to get one. Well, we mean the number one. And so you can only use the digits one to nine at most one time each. You're going to place a digit in each box to make a true statement. So you should pause right now, play around with this for several minutes, and then check back in. So if you're checking back in, that means you tried a little bit. Um, there is a link that you can click on for um, a workout solution and some other hints. But I'm going to give you one hint after you tried. If you're stuck, read this hint. So only read this hint if you're stuck. All right, uh, even numbers make good denominators. Okay, so if we're gonna use that, let's think about the even numbers. We have like two and four and six and eight. And so if I try and put a few of those in here, we're gonna kind of play with that. If I put two and four and six, I don't know, I just went in order. I'm trying to think about making the number one. Um, now I can only use the digits one to nine and only one time each. So like if I put a one here, I can't use one again. Now one half seems like it's gonna be a little too big because I still have to add two more fractions to make one. But let's see, if I put a three in here, well, that already went way too big. So that's not gonna work just by using my estimation. Um, so any number that I put in here that's bigger then one, like, five, that's just too much. I'm getting improper fractions now, so that can't work. Um, so then I'm thinking that maybe one half is just too big anyway. So let's get rid of that. And how about if we put an eight in there instead? Because I'm thinking eights are kind of smaller. So if I have, like, let's see, what's my biggest denominator? Four is my biggest, well, it's not the biggest. It's the biggest, uh, smallest number, which means the biggest pieces. So I want to have, like, the fewest of those. So I'm going to try and put one there. So I have one-fourth. And then one-six is the next biggest size. Um, so I'm thinking maybe I want to put, like, a two here. And it's okay to be improper. It doesn't say that they can't be. But I'm thinking that if I want to actually add those guys up together, the denominator here would be, let's see, 6, 4, and 8 would be 24. So let's think about if we break them all up evenly into 24 pieces, um, whatever happens here, we'll have to multiply by 4 to make 24. So that would be 4. So I'm having 8. Um, this has to be 6 so times 6. Uh, which would make a six, and then this one would be times three. So whatever I put in here times three, well, let's think about this. I have six of the 24, eight of the 24, that's 14. So I need 10 of the 24. So I'm thinking about something I could put in here times three that would make 10. Well, that's not gonna work. So I have to rethink that a little bit more. Um, let's see. I really like the one fourth being here because I think that's the only way to make that one work. Um, how about if I put, um, instead of a two, if I make that three instead, and then that would make me have 12 pieces here. So I have 18. Oh, and if I wanna make six more, right? Because six plus 12, that's 18 pieces. And if my denominator is 24, I would need six here. I can make six if I put a two. And so they're all different numbers. Two, one, three, eight, four, six. This makes me have the six I need. So six plus six plus 12 is 24. So I get 24 out of 24, which is the one. So this is a fun little exercise just to see that you really understand the operations and can play around with them. You also understand their sizes because we're trying to make them equal one. So it works with your estimation skills. Um, so that was uh, a good chance to practice all of that. So we're going to move on. That was a review for us for adding. Oh, it's so bumpy here. But we're going to look at now multiplying rational numbers. So there's a couple of different ways to think about it. So one way that we've talked about multiplication is that it's repeated addition. So if I have three times two thirds, that's really saying I have a two thirds plus another two thirds plus another two thirds. So it's just saying that I want to add two thirds three times. But we've already talked about that. If they have the same denominators, which they do, I'm going to keep that as the size. And then I'm just going to add 
how many? So I have two plus two plus two. So I have six of these thirds and six of these thirds actually ends up being two pieces. Now, if I want to have a visual of this, if you look at part two, it wants me to use the area model and try and use rectangles. So you should pause it and try and create the picture for it. Now that you've tried, let's check. So three of the two thirds, that's saying that I have two thirds here and I have another two thirds here and another two thirds here. And so what we could do then is kind of do a fill in. So this guy could actually fill in this piece or, well, let, let's backtrack just a second. So if I undo that one and what I'm actually gonna do, I think it might be easier, is to take like this piece, fill in that guy and this piece to fill in that guy. And so if I fill in here, fill in here, then those are all gone and I still have the two holes. So that makes kind of sense, I think, for that repetition when we have a whole number times a fraction. But now what's gonna happen when I have a fraction of a fraction? Sometimes we'll even read this as half of three fifths. So if I'm saying I have half of something, that means I wanna split that something into two equal parts. Let's look at what three fifths will look like. Three fifths, I'm gonna keep going with my rectangle, it's a little easier to draw. So I'm gonna draw four lines in here because that will make five equal sections. And so I have three fifths. So here's one of them, two of them, three of them. So this is what I have is three fifths. Now it says, I want you to take half of that. So we're gonna look at it from a little different perspective. So this was three fifths. Let's look at it as cutting all of that in half. I mean, I could cut the whole rectangle in half, but really I'm talking about that I only want to see half those of those pieces. So when I split it in half, you could see that those three pieces turned into kind of like six, and I only want to have three of those. So when I take half of those three fifths, you can see that I have three that I'm talking about. Now they're not fifths anymore. I've actually broken my hole into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten equal pieces. So this is actually going to be three tenths now. All right, let's try that again. So for number for part B, I have two fifths of one fourth. So I need to figure out what one fourth would look like first. I'm gonna draw it kind of similar. It'll have a rectangle, four equal pieces, and I'm only talking about one fourth. So this is the section that I'm talking about. Now it wants me to take two fifths of that. So I need to take that section and break it up into five equal pieces. But I really need to turn the entire hole into equal pieces, so I'm gonna extend those lines. And so you can see I had kind of four pieces going that way and now I had to break it up into five. So I have five pieces that way. So I know that the size of my piece is gonna be 20 -ish. And let's see, I only wanted two of those fifths. So this is two, two of those fifths. So really the part I'm talking about is like right here, this guy and this guy. So two out of those five that were in that one fourth. So what that looks like is I have two of those little pieces out of 20, which I guess I could reduce that. This is gonna be equal to one tenth. So again, to kind of look at it, we had um, with just the shaded guys, this was like one column shaded, and then we had those two guys. So it's like one by two. And you can see the number two came out of that. I just want to go back for a second and if we look at number two with that of we could see that that oopsie another way is to see it as two-thirds of the three so if you had like these three holes so i have three holes it's saying i want two-thirds of that so if you're gonna take two-thirds of that you could see kind of just a different way of looking add it, if those are my three holes, two thirds of that, you could still break these all into 
and thirds and say, well, I want two thirds of that piece and I want two thirds of that piece and I want two thirds of that piece. But really that's one, two, three, four, five, six of these thirds, which is two. Okay, flipping over to the next page, we're gonna do it again. Let's look at four sevenths of the two thirds. So again, I'm gonna start with my rectangle by actually looking at the two thirds. So here's two thirds. And so you need to take four sevenths of that amount. So you could pause it right now, try it before I give away the answer. So on the, I'm looking at this uh, kind of like sideways. I need sevenths. So let's see, three, four, five, pretend they're equal. So basically it was broken up in three columns and then I'm breaking it up into seven rows. So you can see there's gonna be 21 pieces. So they're 21st, I guess you could say. Now out of that, I wanna take four sevenths of it. So I split like this chunk into those seven slices, um, but I only want four of them. So there's one, two, three, four. So that's four of those sevenths. So what that really is, I'm gonna try and highlight it a little better. There's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces. And that should make sense because we were kind of two in this direction that was shaded. And then we were four in this direction that was sh shaded. So two rows of four would equal the eight. So we have eight twenty-first. All right, and we're gonna try this again. We have one sixth of, well, two thirds again. So we already know what the two thirds is looking like. So two thirds shade, we know two thirds. Okay, and then we want to take uh, one sixth of that. So I need to break this up into six. So there's six sections, I'm gonna extend them. So I have the equal number of pieces. And I only want one six this time. So that's only one row to so that little section. So we know that that was two thirds and this is gonna be the one six. So you can see that I have a total of 18 pieces because it was three this way by six this way. So that's 18 pieces, which we've seen as an array before. And then we have um, the two this way and then only one this way. So two by one, you can see that shaded, double shaded region um, will be one times two. So we get two eighteenths, which we could simplify that to be one ninth. So what's happening, you can kind of see from our diagrams, is that when you're multiplying rational numbers, if you have a fraction A over B and C over D, when you multiply them together, it's really just multiplying the numerators and multiplying the denominators, as you could see up above. So we said up above that we had three times six, that's the number of pieces, which became the 18. And then the number shaded was two times one, because um, that was where our overlap ended up falling. So that's our definition of multiplication for rational numbers. So there's no common denominator or anything like that. Now there's some properties that you've already seen before, um, but we're looking at them again with rational numbers. So if you're looking at the multiplicative identity, that's the number that you can multiply a fraction by and maintain its identity. So that's still gonna be the same number one that we've seen before. And then we have the multiplicative inverse. Now what the inverse does is it's what you can multiply a fraction by that you end up equaling the number one. So that happens anytime you have these guys flip-flopped over each other. Because by the definition of multiplication, this will become AB over BA, but really since they're integers, we already know that that's commutative, it has a commutative property, so we can switch it to be AB over AB, which will equal one. And so its inverse is this B over A guy, which, which we'll call the reciprocal. So if you wanna see just like a little numerical example, if you have like two thirds, if you multiply it by three over two, that will make six over six, which is one. So you can see the number two thirds times its reciprocal will get us the identity. There's also a distributive property 
and we've seen these before, but we're just now we're showing that you can do them even with the rational numbers. And we'll multiply, multiply, so we'll get AC over BD plus AE over DF by the definition of uh, multiplication. And it can go with subtraction also, so this could have been a subtraction, and then that would have been a subtraction. Now the multiplication property of equality says that um, two fractions are equal each other, like A over B equals C over D. Um, if that's true, then A over B times some other fraction will equal C over D times that same exact fraction, as long as those first guys were equal. Um, the multiplication property of inequality, well, that says if you have two fractions and one is less than the other one, then you can also multiply. But if E over F, make a little condition, that if A over B is less than C over D, sometimes we end up having to actually flip the fraction. And again, we've seen that before, and here's our condition. It is if this E over F is positive, then it stays the same, it stays the same. Um, if E over F is negative, then we have to flip that. I should have written the same up here. So it's the same as the original inequality versus a flip if we have a negative number there. And then we have the regular multiplication property of zero, which says that when we take a number, including these rational numbers, times zero, we get zero, because really it's saying like we have no sets of that a, b. Okay, we're gonna look at a few examples to use some of these properties. So the distributive property, if we use it um, to find the product of these. Now we have mixed numbers and there's a couple of different ways that you can um, solve this um, product. Uh, but if to use the distributive property means to write two and one third as like two plus one third, because that's really what it means, two holes and then that little part. And we're gonna multiply that by four holes and that little part. And so to distribute, we're going to have to take that whole two and distribute it to the four and the three fifths. So we have two times the four plus two times the three fifths. And then we're gonna have to take the one third and multiply that times the four. So we're gonna have four of these thirds and then one third times the three fifths. And so we're gonna have two times four, we get eight. Two times three fifths, so that's two sets of three fifths. Um, you can write this as two ones and then just multiply across, but you could also know three fifths and three fifths would be six fifths. Then we have four times one third, that's four sets of one. So again, we can say um, four ones and then multiply by one third, but you also know four one thirds would be four thirds. And then lastly, we have one third times three fifths. We can use the definition of multiplication and multiply one times three and three times five. That's gonna end up being three fifteenths. And so we have um, all of these fractions. Now we need to add, so that's going back to the last unit. We need to have a common denominator. And so the common denominator here between 5, 3, 15, and really 1s is going to be 15. So 8 needs to multiply by 15, or we could just leave that whole. Let's actually leave that whole. Since we started with mixed numbers, we can write that um, as mixed numbers. So we'll keep that whole. So actually, let's just worry about the other guys. We'll multiply this by 3, this by 5, and we'll leave the last guy. So we have our 8 wholes plus 18 fifteenths plus 20 fifteenths plus the 3 fifteenths that we had originally. So adding all our fifteenths together, that's going to give us 41 fifteenths. Now you can see that that is actually improper. We have a couple holes in there. So 41 fifteenths, that can actually go two whole times and leave us with 11 fifteenths. So it's 2 and 11 fifteenths. So we have 8 plus the 2 and 11 fifteenths, 
So that's going to be 10 and 11 fifteenths. All right. For part two, it's really using the multiplicative inverse to try and solve some equations. So we want to get this x alone. So we can multiply 2 thirds by 3 over 2. But we need to make um, this still true. So we have to use the multiplication property of equality. So we have to do it on both sides. So again, this right here will become 1 because they're multiplicative inverses. So that'll be x equals, and we'll end up with 33 over 12, which you could reduce that because it's really like 3 times 11 and 3 times 4. So we could really say that's 11 four fourths like we saw before. For part B, that takes a little bit of work before we can isolate our x. It still has a 2 thirds, but we need to make the 5, 6 go away. So we're going to subtract 5, 6 and subtract 5, 6 over here. So those will cancel and we'll get negative 2 thirds x equals. Now we want to make a common denominator in order to subtract these guys because they're not the same size pieces. So that would be a 12. So I'm going to multiply this by 3 over 3, this by 2 over 2. So that will be 9 twelfths minus 10 twelfths, which will end up being negative 1 twelfth. And we're going to multiply again by the multiplicative inverse. So that will be a negative 3 over 2 on both sides. So we know that these two together make a 1 because they're inverses. So we're going to get x equals. And on the right side, we'll multiply straight across. That will make a 3 over 24. And that's all positive because a negative with that negative. And then we can reduce this. This is like 3 times 1 over 3 times 8. So we have 1 eighth. All right. For part 3, we have a little word problem going on. It says UCLA had a faculty reduction and lost one fifth of its faculty. There are 320 faculty members left. So how many were there originally? So we don't know the original number, so that would be the x. This is the original number of faculty. And there's a few different ways to solve it, but what I notice is that if I'm going to lose one-fifth, that would mean that I have four-fifths left. So four-fifths of the original amount is what that 320 is representing. So if I want to write four-fifths of the original amount, that's where that 320 is coming from. So then I need to be able to solve that. So I'm going to multiply by that multiplicative inverse on both sides. And we end up again, this is just 1. So we get x is equal to 320 times the 5 fourths. And so those are 321. And so if we multiply 320 times 5 and divide that by 4, we end up getting 400. So there were originally 400 faculty. Now, if you want to kind of double check your right, which you should always do, we could think about it back into our original, um, just like the words. And so it says it lost one fifth of its faculty. So one fifth of that 400 is equal to 80. So this is the number that they lost. If you look at 400 minus that 80, you get the 320, which is the current number of faculty. All right, we're gonna move on to uh, division for our last little bit here. Third, sometimes we'll call 